Namaste. How's it going? The Nadi Shodana, or the alternate nostril breathing, also known as the breath for purifying our energetic channels, or the Nadis, is probably one technique I've talked about the most on this channel and in our website. For one, it's my personal practice. It's part of my life. It has served me in so many layers and levels, not just in yoga and my meditation, but also in promoting my health and wellness. And it's for everyone, you know, from a beginner's practice all the way to the advanced stages of your journey, because there are ways to modify the technique to suit your needs, to suit your nature, preference, as well as your level and ability. All right. However, practicing pranayama becomes even more meaningful if we do it in conjunction with the asana or yoga postures. Because the body is the main nadi. If the body is tight, if the body is blocked and heavy, yeah, the energy won't be able to flow so freely through our system. So for today, let me share with you a sequence yeah, comprising of both the asana, yeah, postures for opening the body. Then we will have a short practice of the Nadi Shodana. This is actually the class I will be teaching tomorrow. Yeah, I rehearsed my class, so I yeah, thought of like sharing with you yeah, this sequence. Okay, so lying on the tummy, yeah, and then you can do this sequence with yeah, a folded blanket, yeah, so you can support your joints and you feel light. And these are all gentle techniques. Okay, so bending the right knee out to the side and keep the left side long. Right. So you have the choice to just keep your uh, extended arm open, or you can bend that elbow too. And then just turn your head towards that bent side. All right. And then relax. And then begin to allow your mind to connect with your breath. As you inhale, feel the breath expand the lungs inside. And the abdomen opens, even all the way down to your hips. And as you exhale, let your body weight falls and contours on the shape of the support under you. Yeah, this position is so beneficial for releasing tension in the hips, yeah. allowing the breath to flow openly, since when we're facing down, our lungs can fully relax. And this is calming and relaxing for the mind. So many benefits for practicing the Masakri Dasana. And this is a general practice. Everyone can do this technique. All right, so keeping your body relaxed, folding that left leg, so that extended leg, and allow that knee to circle around. All right, knee mobility is important yeah, because when we do uh, pranayam or even meditation, yeah, we bend at the knee joints and then suppleness of the knees and then the adjacent body parts yeah, will assist us in sustaining the pressure and the challenges of sitting poses for meditation and pranayama. All right, and just find that leg from side to side, like your leg is waving. And just breathe easy here. You may also synchronize the breath as your knee bends to you. Inhale as the leg opens, exhale. Then reverse again. If you feel the head needs to turn, yeah, you can always do that. Yeah, turn the head the opposite direction to counter yeah, the, the heaviness of that side. Okay, yeah. You can also grab hold of that foot if you feel like you can still gain access to the inner linings of the hips. You can use the arm there to support the head. Yeah. 
I just left my head so my microphone doesn't get in the way of my instruction. But just relax the head if you're doing it. Okay, or you can also relax your head over that arm. And then with the hand supporting you, this becomes a deeper stretch for the knee. And also becomes a side stretch, lateral extension of the spine. Breathe. Okay, and then from there, you just yeah, turn over. All right, so you're on your back now. And, right, just crossing your arms behind the head, so they become like your elevation. Lifting your knees up to 90, and then just let them fall from side to side, like you're twisting and rubbing the spine already. Yeah, so the breath pattern here, as you lift those legs, inhale, and as you let them fall, exhale. Okay. And also, this sequence is good for uh, rehabilitation, if you're nourishing, for example, an injury, and then you're ready to go back to the practice, but not too intense yeah, for the body. Yeah, so this might be able to help you. This could also serve your sports, yeah? after, for example, your intense activity to come and reconnect again to your subtle entities. Yeah? Okay. And then from there, yeah, open one leg out. You can open the arms now and then swinging that free leg up. So like the anchor, yeah? So like you're forming the shape of yeah, the swinging anchor. And this opens the what? Yeah, sacral lumbar region down the low back. You can also reach that arm over the head, yeah, same arm as a swinging leg. Yeah. You can also rub that leg a few times as you come back. And then reverse. All right, when you practice pranayam, as a preparation for pranayam, you don't want very stimulating uh, postures. Yeah? Postures which relax the body and the brain, the mind. Yeah. I guess you don't want to be overstimulating your nervous system when you practice your pranayam. Because this, after the pranayam, is your meditation, right? Or your mudra. Okay, and then from there, uh, just a mild up and down motion to rub the low back and then also to decompress the brain. All right. And then from there, you know, fall to the side, the same side as the camera, and then turn your head towards the floor. Yeah, a modified version of the Garbhasana or the position of the embryo. But if you, know, you have access to what um, a pillow you know, or a padding, you can use that too. So there's less pressure on the shoulders and the head. Right. And then maybe stay here just to yeah, balance the brain and relax that hemisphere. Okay, and then pressing up to your sitting. Good. And then from the sitting position, yeah, left leg, yeah, crosses under, and the right leg hugs on top. Okay, if this is um, not serving you for yeah, reasons like if your knees are not ready for a deep bend, you're always, yeah, allowed to straighten that bottom knee. And then you're twisting, yeah, towards that bent side. Good. And then you can turn the head around, you know, let the head fall from ear to ear, shoulder to shoulder. And settle. All right. So, when you work on your yoga asana in preparation for your pranayam, so the principle is universal. Yeah, so you work on twisting, such as this, side stretching, the various movements of our spine, flexion, where we fold over 
uh, are haps and extension and back dins. And of course, if you're sitting upright, you're doing your neutral spine or your axial extension. Okay? All right. You can yeah, do the full one with the bottom knee bent as well. Okay. And then from this side, uncross him. What you do, yeah, open the right leg out to the side, yeah, and the left knee remains under. All right, breathing in and a side stretch. Over. Yeah, extending the spine. All right, and then come up. All right, changing sides. Yeah, for example, yeah. You feel like doing the postures, you know, more than one repetitions, do that, yeah? However, when you do your preparatory technique leading to pranayam, I'd recommend maybe a max of like 20 or even you know, 25 minutes of yoga asana. That would suffice. Treat it as a separate practice from your stimulating and energizing asana. Or if you're just beginning the practice, the first, what, three months of your practice, yeah, this would be enough. Okay. And after that, I do a downward facing dog. Yes, yeah, so it's an inversion. Yeah, this one. Yeah. An alternative to this one is the kneeling version with the forehead touching the ground. Yeah. All right, with the head lower than the heart, yeah, just lift those legs to alternate. Yeah. Decompress the hips. All right, one more thing. A pranayama practice, yeah, a preparation to it, it's less alignment focus. It's more of your body feeling it and adjusting yeah, to suit yeah, the openness of the inner body. And then just stay for maybe another three or five mindful breathing. All right. If you know how to do the kapal bati, you can do kapal bati here. Just one short round. Five, four, three, two, and one. All right, beautiful. Inhale, hip slide. And exhale down. Okay, and then from there, drop to your knees. Yeah, from the knees, yeah, down to your tummy again. Good. And we're going to repeat the sequence from the top. This time is the leg further away from me bending and the leg away from the camera. And then relax first, turning your head towards that bent shoulder. Good. One side is tighter than the other. Now sit yourself. Let me just adjust. Okay. If you want that additional support, you can always add something to support your shoulder and your head. Okay. All right. And then circle that leg around. All right. Continue. Let me just turn the. Yeah. So, yeah. I keep on like giving you instructions. <laughs> I circle around, lifting side to side. You can even rub the toes around or the ankles and even the toes. Yeah, you might hear pops and clicks there. Those are like trapped energy clogging your joints. Okay. And then some encouragement and support coming from that shoulder and the arm. And then settle. And this position feels relaxing, right? And allow your pelvis to broaden, your opening, and decompressing yeah, the pelvic cavity. Okay, untangle, and then flip over. 
Well done. Okay, and let's repeat the sequence left and fall. This time you can make the motion a little bit more fluid. You can also yeah, lift that leg higher and rubbing using that hand. Yeah. The amount of rotation inside the hip. Good. One of the challenges of cross leg sitting position in pranayama. Yeah, after a few minutes, your nerves start to become fidgety and then you lose the focus and awareness or the concentration. And then by doing this, yeah, you free those joints and deep linings of the hips of stagnation. Okay, side to side. All right. Feel your hips. Huh? You can kick that leg a few times. And then the other one. Beautiful. Okay, crossing the legs. Up and down again. Breathing in as you lift up. Exhale as you fall. Okay, now keep going. Okay. So let me turn my angle again. All right, head and away from me, you tuck. And you can use that additional support for your head to rest on. The side position here, decompressing the hemisphere of the brain. Beautiful. Okay, and rising up to sitting. And, and from the sitting position, yeah, if you feel like the hips need to move, you can do a bit of this. Uh, and then the mild swinging at the back. Okay. And we're going to twist again. Yeah. Right knee is the bottom knee, left leg is the hugging knee. Yeah, you're able to straighten your bottom leg if you need. All right, twisting energetically, what it does, it stimulates the nerve clusters around the core region, and the Manipura Chakra, and since it's a bind, it also stimulates the pelvic floor, yeah, where the Agni, yeah, or the bodily energy yeah, comes from, and this energy, we're going to try and electrify through the Pranayama, and the additional techniques we're going to be doing you know, towards the end of the session will allow that energy to rise in the brain. We call them mudras. Okay. All right, and crossing. You, know, you can start either leg with a side stretch. Yeah, you can now yeah, advance by holding onto that bent knee and reaching over. All right. You can angle, reach over. Okay, and then changing at the leg, at the shoulder. You might move the calf away from the inner thigh. And remember that lesson about rubbing the tongue around. You can do that. This is our dress already. All right, good. And from there, a few of this. All right, and then towards the inversion again, the downward facing dog. Yeah. Inversion, technically, technically, when the head is lower than the heart, that's already an inversion. And in Hatha Yoga, when we're inverted, we channelize the energy to the brain, therefore it becomes a mudra, okay? And then lifting the alternate legs. You can also allow your legs to shake up in the air with that same hand as, as the extended leg, stretching. Okay, and then easy. Good. Uh, you can just stay here for like three or five mindful breathing or kapal body. Five, four, three, two, and one. All right, inhale, lighten your hips. And exhale. All right, knees fall on the ground. And this time, lift the upright knee. Okay. We always 
finish, I recommend finish the asana part. Yeah, with an extension. Yeah, back bit. Okay, so you might just do one hand uh, Ustrasana or the half Ustrasana where one hand is resting on the heel at the back or you can do the full supported with your hands yeah, or arms yeah, hugging and then crossing at the back to yeah, serve as your cushion as you open the disc of your spine upwards. Or, or you can do the full one, not only if you're ready. Yeah. And yeah, to the back with Trasana. Yeah, yeah. Admittedly, this is an advanced backbend, but again, there are many various modifications. Yeah, as I've stated, yeah, supported. Yeah, one hand, and after changing hand. Or both hands. Yeah, if you need to recover and redo it again, yes, I encourage you to do it about two or even three times. We're gonna do it twice. Yeah. All right. Come up. <coughs> All right. Walk those knees, yeah? and then with that cushion under the knees remain supported. You can do a light circle around there, and side to side the shoulders. Okay. You can even circle around to recover the low back. All right, and one more, Ustrasana. Yeah, for example, yeah, all right, yeah. You have like injury, yeah. You're sustaining an injury or you're nourishing an injury down the knees. An alternative is this. Yeah, the supported, yeah, cobra, yeah, or the sphinx position. Yeah, you have modifications, yeah. As long as you open the disc of your spine, that would suffice. Yeah. But I particularly, yeah, if you're able, encourage you to learn the Ustrasana. Yeah. This is like the gateway for deep energetic benefit. Kneeling back bits. Although this may take time, well, but if you're capable, why not? You're giving that gift. You grow it. All right. Good. Not too many or not too long there. And just walk in place. Okay. And then after that back bend, you can do yeah, another round of downward dog to neutralize the sensation in the hips. And you can just do this to decompress. I normally do this after uh, a weight-bearing position, such as back bend, you know, to free the hips. All right, and another round of Kapalbati, or just stay natural breath. Five, four, three, two, and one. All right, inhale, hips slide in. And exhale them back. Well done. All right, and then come down kneeling. Good. And then settle for a couple of breaths in your balasana. Beautiful. All right. And then we rise and sit. Okay. Yep. So let me come closer to you so I can give you a more personal instruction regarding the, yeah, and the Shadana. Now you're ready. Yeah, body is open. Yeah, lungs open. Yeah, and then you can now flow your energy. All right. Sitting upright, yeah, in the Sukhasana, this position. Yeah. Uh, you can put an elevation there if your hips feel heavy. Right. And then for about a minute, you know, just allow your brain, the body, and your mind to reconnect and then bind again. Natural breath flowing to the sa. And exhale, your mind says, Ah. 
Beautiful. Okay, so keeping your body upright, but don't tighten. Okay. Beautiful. All right. Now, opening your eyes now, so I can give you the instruction for uh, the hand gesture. Uh, so the right thumb closes the right nostril. Apply a, per, uh, a mild or even firm pressure, but don't uh, don't strain. Yeah, and you're pressing through the the crease, and yeah, not just not the hole itself. Yeah. Okay, and then the index and the middle fingers are uh, you know, folded, or you can rest them just between the eyebrows. Yeah, both of them can be practice both techniques okay so inspiring through that left nostril and stay for four three two one using that ring finger and closing that left nostril and exhale through your right you don't have to hold the bottom of the exhalation inhale that right side and stay for four Three, two, one. Closing with the thumb. Exhale through your left. Let's do yeah, two more sets together. Inhale through that left. Tall spine. Stay for three, two, one. Ring finger closest nostril. Exhale right side. Inhale, right side. Stay for four, three, two, one. Closing, exhale through your left. All right, one more together. Inhale through the left. And stay. Now, can you close your eyes already? Two. One, ring finger closes left, exhale through the right. Relax your eyes behind your eyelids. Inhale through your right side. And holding, three, two, one, swap. Exhale through your left. All right, now I give you the freedom to explore the possibilities. All right, so send that breath up to your left. All right, and then counting internally. You can keep following that four beat retention. Or if four seconds is quite easy to sustain, you may explore six counts, counting in reverse from that higher number all the way to one. Even you can go as long as eight beat retention. Yeah, that's possible too. It's doable, eight beat, even for a general practice. If you've done this before already and it's part of your regular practice, explore the possibility of maybe holding it to like what, 10 second or 10 beat, 12 beat, 14 beat, or even the 16 beat retention. Yeah? But don't rush. Yeah, pranayam, as in other techniques we practice in yoga, is a journey. We develop through time. What's important is the uniformity, the consistency, and the progression. Yeah. Because the benefit, the realizations, occur yeah, as we develop not <laughs> that goal actually, the goal is just there, but the beauty of it is as you venture you know, through the practice.
if you've been practicing the Ujjayi Pranayama already, you can do that in Nadi Shodhana. You can also engage in the internal Shambhavi, where you're magnetizing the eyes between the eyebrow center inside the forehead. like a hypnotic experience. the body starts to feel this tension, <laughs> if you start to feel restless, yes, move. Yeah, There's no preventing you from doing that. But in a way that you focus on the technique and just release the stagnation and come back to stillness. One more, your pace, your time, your practice, per nostril. Lovely experience, isn't it? The ability to adapt and still benefit immensely you know, from this healing practice. One more that side. Holding. Three, two, one. Stop. Exhaling. Hopefully it's your left side now. Otherwise, just keep practicing. Breathing in. And we're staying. Four, three, two, one changing, exhale the other one. Inhale that side. Stay eyes inside the brain. Two, one change and exhale. Good. Rest the hands. You might experience constriction, the upper part of your nasal cavity. That's normal, yeah, since we're narrowing the pathway there, therefore irrigating the channels there. But as soon as you breathe again, the sensation should come back warm, open. Yeah. Yeah. And let's wrap our tongues around the mouth. Mm. Yeah. And swallow behind the cheeks, between the lips and the gums and the teeth. And then some neck releasing. Circle the neck around. And settle. Beautiful. All right. And then another a moment of reconnecting to the room, yeah? yeah. Although, yeah, as much as we want to stay yeah, in the practice, we have to come back. Yeah. If you have the time after this session, you can do your shavasana. Yeah. All right. But otherwise, let's finish our session. Okay. Breathing in those arms left high over the head and then looking up. And as you exhale, let them fall slowly down. All right. Find your rhythm again, like you're stopping the movement of the clock. And 
And notice how the breath is so more open, freer, the body is open, the brain is clear and calmer. Beautiful. All right, one more nourishing breath in, this time looking up. And then can we stay here and lightly tense the body and stay for three, two, and one. And we seal the hands together and then let them fold in front of the hearts. Yeah. Namaste to you. Namaste, everyone. Yeah. I'll see you in the next video. Yeah. Enjoy the rest of your practice. Enjoy the rest of your day. Namaste.